for the final part of this lecture here, now that we decide to use Eiffel as our learning language for design, so we should really know how Eiffel contracts actually work at the runtime. So when you develop your uh, projects or labs, you will know how to really use the contracts to facilitate your developments. This will be the formulated view for checking contracts for any feature uh, after you have created the uh, context objects. I'm going to go over some concrete example together with you to make it more intuitive, but it's really the most precise view I can think of to really help you understand, to really construct some mental model about how things are checked at the runtime. We get there, and this is actually to generalize. Uh, this first diagram here talks about just account example that we, we have been uh, running through this lecture. And this just make it more general about any feature. Okay, So that one is only for those of you who might be a little bit more abstract minded. So I will leave that to you for this diagram here. And then uh, this slide here is basically just summarizes what we're going to see in this uh, state diagram. I'm just going to uh, go through them. I'm not going to cut in detail because I will go over them already in the diagram. So this one, uh, please read it through as well more carefully. So before a feature call, we should really check for the pre-state value against the precondition. And we have to, because later, at the end of the method, or at the end of the feature implementation executed, we have to check for post condition, which relates the pre-state value and the post-state value. That is why at this point here, before we actually execute implementation, we must cache or memorize all the involved uh, pre-state value. So now it's a little bit informal here, but later on in the later lecture, we'll see exactly how this caching process is actually conducted. I'll give you more a uh, sophisticated example later. But for now, it will be enough. And then after the feature call, we have to check two things. Because now we are already reached the post states, we can definitely, uh, number one, we should check the invariance to make sure the resulting objects should be a valid one as far as the class invariant is concerned. And also we should check the post condition. And this is where in the post condition over here, in order to evaluate the post condition in general, we must make sure the caching process in the pre-states is actually complete. Okay, so now this is something uh, I want to summarize for you before we go for the diagram. Okay, so, so now let's go over the diagram before we see a little bit more uh, snaps uh, screenshots for the uh, contra violation. So now I'm gonna go, uh, before I enter, let's now go to uh, part three. And then, in order to go over the diagram, let me set the context together with you. Okay, let's consider this particular uh, implementation view for our contracts and implementation. So we talk about some account class, very similar to the account, uh, the account class that we have been talking about. The account, we got owner, we got balance. And by the way, now we are already talking about iPhone, not Java anymore. And then we got a nice precondition over here to say, whatever new balance you are, you are supplying for constructing the account objects should be strictly larger than zero. Okay, And then we have a tag for this particular post condition. So balance should be positive to be set up. And also here, I'm just saying, let's say we also have a post condition for this particular constructor over here. So it's, I just call it a net as a tag. So the balance must be equal to the parameter new balance, and also the owner should be equal to the the string input. Okay, so the, uh, these are the contracts for the make constructor, and also for the withdraw. Let's say we got two preconditions over here, as we learned before. So the amount the amount must be larger than zero, and also it must be affordable. Let's say we just use a strictly less than over here, and then. For the post condition for the withdrawal, we simply say balance is equal to all balance minus amount. And notice that we don't have to manually cache or memorize the pre-state value because now we are in IFO. The compiler does it automatically for us. Okay, And also for the class invariance, we got positive balance, which is balance larger than zero. Okay, So please, uh, before I start, uh, before you go over the uh, state diagram together with me, make sure you're familiar with this particular setup for the contract. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back and forth. Okay, so now, in order to go over this first state diagram, let's assume the following. This is what I want to go through. First of all, we, cr we declare an account object ACC. And then we try to create ACC by calling the constructor make and then by passing A and M 
you can think about A is the initial balance, and N over here is the name of the owner. And then we try to call the withdrawal over here with some amounts. Let's say we just want to withdraw uh, the same amount. Of course, it might uh, cause some violation. But anyway, the uh, important point about this uh, illustration, illustration here is to see the order in which we check the contracts at the runtime. That's more important. Let me summarize what's going to happen, and then we go ahead and do it. We always got to think about the pre-states and post-states. For the pre-state, I'm going to use the uh, green. In the pre-state for the constructor call, we're going to, oh, let's say this. This is this is the pre-state before we call the constructor. And this is the pre-state before we call the withdraw, right? And also, this is the post-state after we the constructor call is executed. And this is the post-state after the withdrawal is executed. So now we have to worry about what to be checked, right? In the pre-state, we should really check the corresponding precondition. So now, in this particular pre-state, we should really check the precondition of the make. And also, in this particular pre-state, we should really check, before we can execute withdraw, the precondition of withdraw. Okay? And then what about the post-states? In both cases, we should always check invariance for sure. And what else? For each particular feature, we have to check their post condition, if any. So now, in this for, for the make constructor, we should also check its post, con post condition of the make. And also, uh, in the post states for withdrawal, we should also check the post condition for withdrawal. So these are all the uh, contracts that we have to check at runtime. And uh, so I'm just summarized for you. But let's see the state diagram. It shows you all the possible scenarios. Let's start with the object creation. So we start from over here. So we say creates the account object over here, and then we simply pass uh, the two input value over here. We pass a, we pass a and n. Okay. So now, so that means we are basically calling this make feature here. So we actually put. I beg your pardon, so you can see the parameter over here is a little bit flipped. Okay, so it should be n and a, or I should, or you know, alternatively, I can swap the order of the parameter. Sorry for the confusion, but let's say a and n. Okay, so what we'll do instead is going to be let's say a should be the amount and n should be the owner name. Okay, you, can, you see the idea. So now, in this particular call, what should we check for the precondition over here? We should check to see. The new balance, which is A, A is larger than zero, right? For this particular instance. So now if we go back here, so now we should first check the precondition of the make. So that's this particular precondition check that I just talked about. So we check to see whether A is larger than zero or not. If it is actually larger than zero, in that case, we can go ahead and try to execute the implementation. Okay. Otherwise, if the precondition over here is violated, so that means we're going to get precondition violation. Okay, and you can see that according to the state diagram over here, if there was a precondition violation, you don't even get a chance to execute the body of implementation for create. Right, that's what we said before. If the client does not even fulfill the obligation, the supplier should not even provide a service. In our case, you should not even execute a implementation for the feature okay that's about creating the objects and after this we have to check for post condition and also class invariance so conceptually you can think about checking post condition first or invariant first doesn't matter let's say we check the post condition first so what what we're going to do now is at the end of your uh, implementation for the constructor so now we're going to check to see the post condition Oh, sorry, we're going to check to see the post condition. And what, what should we check? So now after this, you can think about this. So owner is going to be assigned to n, and amount is going to be assigned to, uh, I mean, the balance is going to be assigned to the amount. So now we're just going to check to see balance is actually equal to n, and also owner is at, uh, sorry, balance is actually equal to the amount and owner is equal to n. Okay, 
So that's exactly the condition that we have to check over here. Okay, the balance equal to A and owner is equal to M. Okay, if this is satisfied, so that means supplier actually does their job properly as far as the implementation is concerned. However, we haven't checked the invariant just yet. But let's say if this is okay, so that means we're now okay to go to another state. What if not? If it is not okay, so that means the post condition is not satisfied. In that case, we get a post condition violation. Okay, so far so good. Let's say if the precondition, uh, sorry, if the post condition was actually satisfied, so now we are in this particular state. Okay, however, to really make sure it's really a valid uh, object state for account objects, we have to make sure the invariance is maintained. So that's why we have to check again for the invariance. Now, in this case, remember, we actually got this particular invariant to check. The balance should be positive. So that is why over here, you will see the account invariant should be checked, that the balance should be larger than zero. If it is really larger than zero, that means over here, it's really important to see the following uh, diagram here. You can see I put a solid ball of a green color. So that means this is really a so-called safe states for the objects. Okay. Otherwise, if the invariant is not satisfying, so that means we'll simply just have a class invariant violation, which is really, really bad. Okay? You should never, ever have class invariant violation. But if you have it, at least you know there's something wrong with the supplier who actually caused the uh, object state to be uh, invalid. Okay? okay, hopefully you get an idea. So now if we go on with the logic here, I'll just uh, finish it very quickly. What should we, uh, let's say we still want to really uh, call this particular uh, withdrawal method here. Let's say we still want to call the withdraw. Okay, so how do we do it? Before we make the method uh, feature call, we have to actually. Oh, okay. Once we say we want to call this uh, feature over here, first of all, we have to check the precondition. Check the precondition for the uh, withdraw. You can just simply come back here and then refer to it. So these are the two uh, precondition that we want to check. I'll leave. I'll leave you to uh, figure out the details over here. Right? It's quite obvious. And then. Once we check this particular precondition here, if it is satisfied, then we can go ahead and execute the withdraw. Okay. If the precondition is not satisfied, again, similar, we are going to get a precondition violation, right? You can see for every feature, so we have to check its precondition first and then execute its implementation. And then we got to check the post condition and class invariant. That's always the principle. Okay, so after we have executed the withdrawal, so now you have to check to see the post condition for the withdrawal. Okay, that's exactly this. If it is satisfied, then we have to go back to this particular state where we still have to check the class invariance because after every method or feature execution, we have to check both the post condition and then the class invariant. And then we check the class invariance again if it is satisfied, we are back to the safe state again. Okay, so this kind of uh, uh, checks goes on automatically at the runtime. So as long as you understand, you have this mental model, uh, mental model whenever you're trying to design your contracts, that will be very useful. So you, would, you, would can, uh, you can expect what's going to happen at the runtime. Okay, so now let's uh, finally, I would just like to go uh, just point out to you uh, what a uh, screenshot is about. So the screenshots also on the slides, just to show you how you can reproduce uh, different kinds of uh, contract violation, because very often you might just run into violation, you want to know how to read them. Okay, I want to just uh, give you some point of reference here. You can download this uh, iPhone source code for the design uh, by following this link here. And then unzip and compile the project in East iPhone Studio and then follow the uh, inline comments about how you can reproduce the contract violation and then what I want you to sh uh, what, what, what I want you to reproduce at least to try one or two violations is to see the stack trace and make sure they make sense to you okay I'll just give you one example from the uh, screenshots uh, let me see from the iPad here let's say just for this particular example here, Let's say from the client side, what we do is we declare Allen to be the supplier object. You can see supplier type is account, right? It's a different way of, de of declaring op uh, variables than in Java. And then we are trying to create a new objects 
coalen of type account, right? That's a context object. And then we are trying to pass minus 10. And apparently minus 10 is going to violate the corresponding precondition of the supplier class, right? The make over here tells you that the balance over here should be positive, but it's actually minus 10. Okay, so we're going to get a precondition violation. Now in this case, you will be also the tag. So that's why specifying a tag for your contracts, either precondition, postcondition, or class invariants will be very useful. So now this positive balance tag is going to be for traceability purpose display on a stack trace. So now if you uh, try to reproduce this in Eiffel Studio, this is what we will see. It will show you that it's exactly this point over here that we have the contra violation. And exactly this particular precondition that is actually violated. And it will actually show you the stack trace about how things happen. Okay? That's kind of the uh, story you want to really f uh, follow through by your, uh, on your own for all other contra violation. Okay, I'm gonna leave uh, this cre uh, the clean uh, screenshots for you so that you can actually follow through. And then finally, you got a formal diagram for the uh, state uh, for this uh, for checking the contracts for general cases. Okay, let me go back to the slide and wrap up for this particular long lecture. Okay, so that's about the precondition violation. You can reproduce it. Okay, that's something I just explained. You also got uh, the uh, another precondition violation for withdraw, and then another precondition violation for withdrawal. Notice that depending on which, uh, let's say the, uh, we, in this example and the previous one, we are showing precondition for the same feature. However, the tag is different. In this case, we are violating affordable amount over here. So that's why the stack trace shows affordable amount. In the previous one, because we were violating the first one, non-negative amount. So that's why the stack trace shows non-negative amounts of violation here. Notice the details here. And then we also got invariant violation over here, and then it simply violates the positive balance invariance. So you can see invariance violation. And we also got post condition violation, right? We just violate this particular balance deducted post condition violation from the withdrawal feature. Okay, finally, what should you, what would be, what would you in, be encouraged to perform uh, some activities beyond this lecture? I would suggest the following. So review your lab zero tutorial videos about how DBC or test-driven developments is supported in IFO. Okay, you can you can also explore the Java code I, I di distributed for you, so you can download it here. And then recall in the fourth requirements. Oh, let me show you. If you recall the fourth requirements over here, you may add a new accounts into your bank. So. Can you implement this uh, requirements in, in the Java code I provided to you just to extend it? What contract do you have to write? Okay, let me go back to the lecture notes over here and then show you. Okay, you want to implement that particular requirements over there and then uh, design the header of the add method, implement it, and then you have to add the precondition, the negated precondition. And also the post condition. And now the question would be, what post condition can you think of? Does it require any skill from 1090? For example, do you need any logical qualification in order to do it? And then what values do you have to manually memorize or cache in the pre-states? In the case of the withdrawal, we only have to cache the uh, balance value. But now in this case, since you are trying to add a collection, what else do you have to uh, cache? Okay, to really find further references, I will actually point to you. So this uh, Eiffel common syntax over here, you can click on that. It's a slides and also common syntax uh, or type errors in Eiffel. You can also click on the slides here and also about how you can draw design diagram. For this particular drawing design diagram lecture, you will be covered a little bit later in the semester. But I would suggest for those of you who might want to get ahead of the progress, you can have a look as well. Okay, so that will be the end of uh, lecture one. So make sure you actually really study carefully for every video chunk I made available to you. And also uh, look through the illustration for iPad, try out the examples and approach me for questions if you have any.